Hello and welcome to the latest installment of Moki Laser. Before we dive into the upgrades, I want to talk about laser safety. First of all, I am not responsible for any injuries or damage caused if you try to follow these plans or design and build your own laser. It's up to you to understand the devices you use and the specific laser diode or laser module and all of the safety requirements associated with that device. So please be safe. At a very minimum, always wear appropriate laser safety goggles. They need to be rated for the wavelength of the laser that you're employing in your project. So even if you have shielding or other you know, sources of safety, unless your laser is fully enclosed, always wear safety glasses. So here it is. This is the upgraded Moki Laser version 1.1. As you can see, one of the things I'm going to add immediately, actually tomorrow, is an emergency stop button. Where you can see I've modeled that. Um, and I also ordered some uh, some laser safe material from JTEC Photonics. You can see there this is a OD3 plus laser material and I will be installing that to surround the laser diode. So on to the primary upgrade here of the hardware which is the DLC32 controller and the associated three and a half inch touchscreen. So I modeled the cover there to provide you know really good airflow while just keeping objects or fingers or anything out of the electronics. So if we look inside, you can see there's the headers for the display and the uh, e-stop switches and the laser control. So those cables can all snake out the sides as well as any additional power requirements that you may have. So those, uh, I, I modeled the cases for both the control board and the display and those are installed and functional on my laser. Um, one of the things I need to talk about though is uh, when you go to implement that DLC32 board, there you see it. Um, out of the box, the stock firmware uh, does not work with Lightburn. So I had to go on to their uh, MakerBase GitHub site and download the latest laser specific firmware for this device. Um, it was, uh, you, know, you can see the link there. Be sure and pick the laser. If you're building a machine like the one that I have here, like the Moki laser, it's going to be a normal. It's not a Core XY machine. So be sure you choose that. Um, you can find the link. Uh, there's a bunch of different versions of firmware in there. I picked the latest and greatest after doing a little bit of research. And I installed that firmware. And it, uh, it worked great. Once I got that installed, it was painless. It, popped right up in uh, Lightburn and uh, I was good to go. So here it is in use. You can see there I'm still using the laser GRBL software. This was uh, you know prior to the firmware upgrade actually but I have everything functional. You can see there is the holder for the control board without the cover on it um, and the uh, associated to the left you see the laser PWM driver and uh, to the right is the touchscreen. You can see it's kind of a mess of cables right now. Um, definitely need to do some cable management. I want to eventually do uh, like a drag chain on the sides and the axes for the cables. You can see I've got the, uh, the cables for the laser kind of draped over the top there. There's the image I'm, I'm rastering. So prior to the firmware upgrade, uh, rastering was ridiculously slow because uh, it would actually pause after each movement and turn the laser on. So it wasn't a continuous movement. You can see it there just kind of starting and stopping at every single point on the drawing file, which uh, was, you know, ridiculously long. I think that that small print, that eyeball there on that uh, small piece of wood, that was about a five hour process. Um, also, you may notice in this image that I do not have the e-stops connected. Um, I had them on there for a while, but the cabling for those was just really too short. So I am uh, making new cables for the e-stops, and then I will uh, get those switches uh, wired back up again. So uh, there it is, very painfully, slowly creating an image on that piece of wood. Again, it was much faster and much better once I upgraded the firmware and moved on to Lightburn. 
Lightburn, I can't say enough good things. It's just phenomenal software. So immediate future upgrades are the emergency stop and laser shield around diode. I'll be doing that this weekend. And I'd like to do a full enclosure and fume extraction. And future upgrades, I'm going to be working on cable management, air assist, and more power, because that means more speed, right? So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this, please like and follow so I can continue doing this.